Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick. We're here in San Jose in California at NFV World Congress 2017. And I'm talking with Kada Khan, who is Director of Simulator Business Unit at Expo. Kada, haven't met you before, so welcome and thanks for talking to us. Thank you for having me here. I would like to begin by asking you this. You gave a presentation, a keynote presentation at NFV World Congress. What was it about? What did you say? Well, um, I was I was talking about how to boost the network IQ. What operators have to do to boost the network IQ, different steps that they need to do to boost the network IQ, starting from you know uh, collecting the data and doing the analytics and how it can be fed into the orchestrations to create the closed loop, zero touch uh, kind of an environment to increase the intelligence in the network. So that was the topic uh, all about that I was talking yesterday. And give us a bit more sense of what, a little, little more depth in it. What did you actually say? How do you boost network IQ? Okay, so the details. So if you wanted to boost the network IQ, right, the first you need to understand the network topology and the assets involved in that network topology. So once you have that intelligent, and the next intelligence that you need to know is how the network slice, the networks, multiple pieces of the networks has been built. And you can get that intelligence from the different catalogs that are available in the orchestration layer. So once you have these two things, you have an intelligence. And based on that intelligence, you should be able to service assure that network in a way that you know, it is automated. So when you are service assuring that network, there's a lot of data available in the network and you can collect all those different datas and you can crunch those datas and you can do a good analytics around the data to create an actionable insight. And that actionable insight will give a lot of intelligence to the orchestration layer which can take this intelligence and automate it and orchestrate it to create a closed loop um, uh, network which we call it as a zero touch network. Um, which without any manual intervention, intervention, you should be able to achieve that uh, that uh, intelligence in your network. That's that's what I kind of was explaining about um, uh, in brief uh, how to boost the network IQ. Okay, Carl. Now changing the subject okay. to some extent, what do you think vendors have to do to convince CSPs, the telcos, etc., the transformation? The transformation journey, which is arduous and expensive, uh, is worth the pain of getting there. Okay. First of all, I believe the CSPs do understand that they have to transform the network and it is must and, and inevitable, right? And they do understand they have to do this because, number one, to be relevant, number two, to be competitive, and number, t number three, to be able to provide um, and cater their subscribers, right? And ever uh, skyrocketing uh, expectations from them, right? So that's number three. And the number four is ability to provide the services you know, on demand, anytime, anywhere, at a given instance of time. So these are all the different things that they have to do. They know that they have to do. And they also know that the next generation technology such as NFV and SDN is going to help them to enable to do that. Build the intelligence in the network, right? And build a smarter network to cater the smarter world. So that's from the CSP point of view. They know they have to do this. And from vendor point of view, what we have to do is we have to partner with like other vendors and also work hand in hand with the operators and the CSPs to provide our product solution and most importantly the expertise and, and show them it works, right? And have them convinced that whatever the NFV promises, that, that it promises like reducing the capex, reducing the opex and, and uh, generating the revenue by bringing in the new services uh, quicker to the market can actually be achieved. Right? And Expo, in fact, has 30 plus years of experience and, and uh, we have worked in many uh, network transformations. And our message to the CSP is that it is definitely worth the pain to go through this. Right? And you can uh, achieve this by building, uh, bringing in a lot of intelligence into the network and, and um, looking at the data, looking at the network, uh, how it looks at a given instance, right? In other words, uh, have a 360 degree visibility of the network and, and build more intelligence into the network to, to kind of uh, achieve this. Kara, we live in a world in telecommunications which is stuffed full of acronyms, mnemonics, uh, initials, mm -hmm. code. Um, and there's always, as you know, something new coming along that you've not heard before or appears, sometimes disappears, sometimes stays. One that seems to be very oh, much at the top of the heap at the moment is cloud native. What does that mean in terms of CSPs and the vendors? Sometimes 
a lot of the people misinterpret cloud native as those uh, public clouds like Amazon and uh, and uh, Microsoft Azure, but it's yeah. not actually that. So cloud native is 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 all about how you can make use of the resources, both hardware and software, that are provided by the cloud infrastructure. In from NFE point of view, that is provided by the NFVI infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? And uh, one of the one of the most important thing to to realize is that the way that the network is designed today you know if you think of uh, how nfv is defined they, you know we define nfv as moving uh, from the proprietary hardware to to the commercial off the shelf hardware yep. it's not only that on the all it's also about moving the software that is running on the uh, proprietary hardware to the commercial off the shelf hardware if not in most of the cases um, you know, I would say that uh, today, the software that is running in the um, proprietary hardware is just moved to the commercial off-the-shelf hardware as it is, right? And uh, that's that's actually not taking the benefit of the cloud infrastructure that is, uh, the, you know, infrastructure resources and the technology. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, from the vendor's point of view, it's 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 more work, right? So they have to re-architect and redesign their software to create it into microservices. And they should be able to use, um, uh, you know, some of the software acceleration technologies such as SRIOV and, and the DPDK and the hardware acceleration technologies such as field programmable gateway arrays to um, enable and, and to effectively use the resources that are available to to, to provide, uh, to turn the software uh, into, into something that is more efficient that can be used in the cloud infrastructure, right? So that's the, uh, from the vendor's point of view, that's the, that's what they have to do. And from the operator's point of view, it's, uh, it's about um, reducing the total cost of ownership, um, performance optimization, um, building smarter networks, building intelligent networks that has high IQ. And um, but these are all the advantages that they can gain uh, from, from those softwares that are cloud, na cloud native softwares and, and uh, can utilize the resources of the cloud native to, to the maximum of it. Okay. Karika, yep. thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you.